What's up guys, my name is Emma Speck and Reviews, and today I'm giving you a review on the Eco Trike 20 inch folding bike. Let's get started. So I've had this bike going on about three years now. I bought it in November of 2018 and it is currently March of 2021. So when I bought this bike, I bought it during the Christmas sale. So I got it for $769. That's without tax. With tax, it cost me $843. I checked on the price today, and today it cost $795. So it's still in that price range of where I got it at, which is really cool. Now when you get this bike, you're gonna have to set it up. It didn't have the wheel on attached, so I had to put that on. Make sure that the brakes were not messed up in shipping and stuff. Make sure that they work before you go on a ride. You're also going to want to fill up your tires to make sure they're at the right pressure. Now if you don't know how to set up a bike like I didn't, I looked up some videos on how to set a bike up and put a front tire on. I've actually learned a lot on how to maintain a bike and how to change a tire <laughs> on a bike. Like before I didn't really know anything on how to take care of a bike, but after watching a lot of videos and doing research, I learned more on how to take care of a bike. So if you haven't ever had one, I think this is a good beginner bike. When you also get the bike, you're gonna first wanna charge it. You can charge it when it's connected to the bike or you can take it off the bike and charge it inside your house. You wanna maintain your battery by taking it out and putting it inside your house so it's not getting hot and cold inside the garage so the cells last longer and you don't have to replace it as fast. The battery on this bike is 36 volt, 12 amp battery. It takes about six to eight hours to charge fully. It has a lock on it so nobody can just take out your battery and walk away. The way this battery locks is when you put your key in, it has this little bolt that comes out of the battery itself and it goes into this metal plate on your bike and it goes into a circle. Now the metal plate is just held in by a screw so sometimes it does come out of place so you have to realign this metal plate because it acts as a guard for your battery so when you're putting it in it aligns your battery to the plugs that are on your bike. They can't access the screw to take off your battery because your battery actually blocks it when it goes so it's pretty secure. This is your console to turn on your electric bike. As you can see, there are four LEDs that tells you the power level of how much battery you have left. And you also have an indicator on your battery with three LEDs to tell you how much battery you have left. I personally use the console because it has four LEDs, so it's a little bit more accurate. And I charge when it starts going from one dot to two dots and it keeps like flickering back and forth. When you're using the bike, you have to keep the key inside the battery to keep it powered. I attach this lanyard to it that's attached to my seat. I haven't had a problem with the keys falling out or anything, but this lanyard's really easy to use. It has a clip on it, so when I want to take out my keys, I can just easily unclip it and then go where I need to go. This bike has a 500 watt rear hub motor. <laughs> The tires themselves are 20 by 4 inch. They are a wide tire and because there's no suspension on this bike, they actually do help a lot with all the bumps in the road or if you're going off-roading, the tires absorb quite a bit. Now it's not the most smoothest ride I've ever been on, but coming in at 800 bucks for an electronic bike is pretty good. I plan on upgrading the fork later on in life to a suspension fork aftermarket. So it'll have some suspension at least, but for now, it's good. The bike does come with its own fenders though, so that's cool. You don't have to go buy any. I do have add-ons on the bike. I have a bike rack that did not come with the bike. I was an add-on. Bar to hold all my items like my flashlight, my phone holder. I have a horn and a water bottle holder. I also added a wireless tail light to my bike and it's connected to this clear piece of epoxy because the mount that came with it didn't really work for me, so I had to make my own. And I also added a seat cushion because the seat itself is pretty comfy, but after you're going on rides for a while, it does, it does feel pretty stiff. <laughs> I think the bike's built well so far. The welds on the bike look okay to me. I'm not an expert welder, but they look fine. And everything's held up so far. I haven't had any issues with the actual frame itself. I have had some issues with the bike. The issues that I've had with the bike is that it stopped working one day and that was right after we adjusted the brakes. But I called up the company and they walked me through on how to check it. So I had to go in the controller box and unplug some wires that they wanted me to try. And those were the brake wires that were connected to the controller box. And after I unplugged it, the bike started turning on just normally 
And they also did send me some new brakes with the hookups for the wires to install. I have not installed them yet because I haven't wanted to go through all this braiding to install them and route all the wire back to the controller box. But I've just left that plug un unplugged and it's been working fine. I think that plug was just to kill the motor when you're on the brakes so it doesn't keep going on you on accident. To me, this bike is aesthetically pleasing. I love the blue trim around the tires. I also added these reflectors all around my bike because every time I go to fold it, the paint actually kind of comes off. So the paint's not that great. Just from itself folding on itself, it causes scrapes. And I figure you can always add a, like a piece of tape or something if you get your bike brand new and you don't want that to happen. Now, if you go to wash your bike, don't totally wash it with the hose. I haven't been confident enough to actually wash it with the hose. I usually take a microfiber cloth, wet it down, and then just wipe my bike off. I have gone through puddles with this bike, but on the bottom where the controller is, there's a hole. And you don't want to get your controller wet because that is not waterproof. That hole's right on the bottom and that's for it to drain just in case some water does get in. It has a drain, so you don't want to really cover it up either. So just don't go in a lake or a very deep puddle and you should be okay. The hub motor itself has been fine in water. The bike folds up really easily. All you have to do is pull down this lever and then bring it across and pull up and it'll release this pin that's on the inside and then you can go ahead and fold it. This bike is on the heavier side. It comes in around 51 pounds. So if you need to pick it up and throw it in your car, it's gonna take a little bit. There is like this stand that your bike sits up on when it's folded. And the handlebars also fold down. You just have to pull up on this lever and then pull it out and it'll fold. The handlebars are also detachable if you needed that extra. To take this off, I have to use an Allen wrench. I tighten this down because I notice if you don't tighten it down right here, when you're going to ride and if you just do like the hand tight, this bar tends to move. So I definitely use an Allen wrench to uh, tighten this. It's a four millimeter. And you just lift this up and you take this screw out and it's off. There's a couple pieces that come loose. This is one of them. It's like a spacer. This piece also comes loose, but I'm gonna let it hang for now. To show you that inside here, there's this little ball and that also comes out. So just be careful when you're taking it off. This piece comes off. You have to slide it and I'll show you right now and why you have to slide it. And then your handlebars will come off. When you're setting down your handlebars, just be aware of that cable. You don't want it to break it. This piece, it slides in right here. Like that and then when I'm storing it or like if I'm taking my bike and a car um, I usually put all these pieces like this so they don't get lost I take this off I slide this piece off um, and you put your handlebar back on these grooves tell you kind of where to put it at and then what you do is you take your other piece kind of have to turn this a little bit slide it in and then it'll go in like that. And then grab your little brass piece. The brass piece fits right here. I'm just gonna stick this right here for now, just to kind of help me hold in the brass piece and align everything. Then you grab this piece. You're gonna wanna screw that in. You wanna leave it open like that. So then you're screwing it in. Put it in like that, and then adjust your handlebar again. Since mine's different and I have this bar right here, I usually just end up using the Allen key to close this because this bar won't allow me to close it the normal way. But let's pretend like it's this is on right. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna screw this in all the way. You're gonna make it real tight, as tight as you can. 
And this is where that Allen key comes in handy because sometimes you can't make it tight enough and it's just really loose. So you just kind of make it tight and then you have to close it. So you want it to be kind of tough to close so the handlebars don't move on you. But like I said, I've gotten this thing pretty tight just by hand and it still moves. So that's why I just use the Allen key and make this screw really tight and then it doesn't move at all. I'm gonna raise the handlebars now to see how high they can go. On the handlebars, they actually have numbers. So you can easily remember what kind of height adjustment you have done. Now, you do have to remember that because this is an electric bike, you don't wanna pull these cords too high because then you'll be pulling on the controller and all the wires and you have a chance of breaking it. So you definitely don't wanna do that. So the highest number is zero and then the lowest number is 12. So it goes from zero up to 12. Then this is how high it can go. I'm about five, five. From the top of the handlebar to right here, it's one foot six at the highest point. This is as low as you can put your handlebars. From the top of the handlebar down to the base right there again, it's about one foot two. So I'm gonna set this seat to as high as it can go that I comfortably feel that somebody could possibly ride this set. I'm gonna go ahead and measure from the seat down to the floor to see an estimate of how high that is. From the seat down to the floor, I'm getting around three foot six. From the seat in this position down to the pedal that's lowered, it's about 210. Lowest position on this seat, it's about 210 to 211 from the seat to the floor. From the seat to the pedal, it's about two foot three. To control the speeds on your bike, you have a low, medium, and high setting. So when you set it to low and you're pedaling, you'll only go so fast. When you go to medium, you'll go a little faster. And when you go to high, you'll get that full 20 miles per hour. When you're on the throttle, the low, medium, and high speeds, whatever it's set to, it doesn't matter. If you're using the throttle, it'll give you that full speed of 20 and you just control it like you would a motorcycle. The 6KM feature on your bike is a walk assist. So if you need help pushing the bike up a hill, what you do is you hold the 6KM button for three seconds and then it'll turn on the motor at a low speed to help you walk up the hill. And when you want to turn it off, you have to hold the button again for another three seconds and it'll turn off. This bike is a load of fun to ride on the street or on the dirt. I prefer the dirt more because I have more fun, but you can also ride it on the street and do trails and stuff with it also. Now this isn't meant for going and going crazy off-roading, unfortunately, but um, I have, I think, pressed the limits a little bit <laughs> and the bike's held up just fine. I have used this bike in the snow. Now we don't get much snow out here in California, but when I did use it, it was pretty fun. The fat tires do help. When I bought the bike, it told me that the max weight capacity that should be on it is 225 pounds. Now I'm exactly at 225 pounds. The bike runs good for me. I haven't had any issues. I actually get the actual mile range that it's rated for, which is about 18 to 23 miles. And I believe I do get that full range being at 225. The range on the bike will vary depending on if you're actually pedaling or just using the throttle. If you're pedaling, you'll definitely get that 23 miles on it for charge, but if you're just using straight throttle, you're not gonna get as far. When I used straight throttle on it, I was off-roading with it. I could definitely notice the battery going down faster, but take into consideration that I was in the dirt, I was going through sand, and I was going up hills. So yeah, I was kind of abusing it that day. To me, this bike came in at a great price point. When I was looking to convert my old bike into an e-bike, it would cost about the same to convert it. And my frame on my old bike wasn't that great. It was an old Walmart bike, and it wasn't really worth me putting all the money into it to fix it, just to convert it to an e-bike. So for me, the EcoTrike folding bike is a great value. Thanks for watching this review on the EcoTrike 20 inch folding bike. There was a lot to cover in this video. If I missed something that you wanna know, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. My name's Emma Specking Reviews and I'll catch y'all later. Bye.